Hello everyone. I'm glad to meet you once again with another interesting English lesson. In our lesson today, we are going to read and respond to a simple poem. We will also be looking at some basic poetic techniques in a given poem. I hope you have got your pupil's book, notebook and a pen ready with you. We all are spending our time leisurely at home these days. We all love leisure. Shall we listen to a poem about leisure? Leisure by W. H. Davies. What is this life if full of care? We have no time to stand and stare. No time to stand beneath the boughs and stare as long as sheep and cows. No time to see when woods we pass where squirrels hide their nuts in grass. No time to see in broad daylight streams full of stars like skies at night. No time to turn at beauty's glance and watch her feet how they can dance. No time to wait till her mouth can enrich that smile her eyes began. A poor life this, if full of care, we have no time to stand and stare. Now open your book to page number 68. They are in unit 6. You have this poem in activity 11. Now tell me how many stanzas are there in this poem? Yes, I know you know the answer. There are seven stanzas in this poem. So what is a stanza? Let's see. A stanza is a set of lines in a poem that forms a smaller unit by themselves. Stanzas are of different types. Let me show you them one by one. If there are two lines in a stanza, we call it a couplet. If a stanza consists of three lines, we call it tacit. If there are four lines in a stanza, we call it a quatrain. And if a stanza has got five lines, we call it synche. And if there are six lines in a stanza, we call it a sestet. An octave is a stanza which has eight lines. Now in our poem Leisure, we have couplets, stanzas with two lines. So what do you mean by rhyming? I know you know the answer because you have been familiar with this word in your previous grades. Rhyming words end with the same sound. If a word rhymes, it ends with the same sound as another. Now take a minute and find all the rhyming words you find in the poem. I hope you have found them. Let's see the screen. Now see these words. The care, stare, end with the same sound. So are the other words. Bows, cows, pass, grass, daylight, night, glance, dance, can, began, care, stare are all rhyming words we find in the poem. Now I'm going to remind you of another common poetic techniques that you find. Children, we are not going to talk about these poetic techniques in detail as we do in literature because our objective of the lesson is to read and respond to simple poem. So what is a simile? Simile is an expression that compares two things showing similarities. Similes often have the words as or like. And what is a repetition? Repetition is a repeating word, phrase, line or a stanza. Repetition draws attention to an idea. Let's look at some examples for similes. Here, our soldiers are as brave as lions. So which words are compared here? Yes, soldiers are compared to lions. We all know lion is considered a brave animal. So here in this sentence, soldiers are similar to lions in the quality of their bravery. See the second one. He is as cunning as a fox. Here, he is compared to fox. If a person is very cunning, we say he is as cunning as a fox. We know fox is said to be a very cunning animal. Now see the third one. His heart was as cold as ice. We know ice is solid and frozen. If a man or person has cold heart, he doesn't feel any compassion or Affection. We also say bright as the sun and sleeping like a lock. 
Is repetition used in the poem Leisure here? Yes. Take one minute and find which words are repeating in the poem Leisure. I hope you have found them. Let's see what they are. Yes, here the phrase no time is repeating in each stanza because it emphasizes the fact that we have no time to relax in this hectic life. What about similes? Here we have the simile, stream full of stars like skies at night. I'm not going to describe this now because I'll be coming to this later in another slide. Now look at the poem. What do you mean by stare? Stare means looking at something uh, with concentration. So what do you mean by boughs here? Boughs are large branches of a tree. And we have the word enrich here. Enrich means to improve or enhance the quality or value of something. And we have the word glance here. Glance means to take a brief look. Now we have the same poem and an activity for you to do. Let's see what it is. Here you are going to choose the correct word or phrase to complete these sentences. Shall we do the first one with me? According to the poet, people do not have time to, we have three options there, take their meals, study or relax under branches of trees. Do we find anything regarding meals or study in the poem? No. Let's look at the poem. Here in the second stanza, we have the phrase, no time to stand beneath the boughs. So the answer is that. Relax under branches of trees. Now it is time for you to do the rest of the activity. Take your time. I hope you have completed the activity. Let's see your answers. We have already done the first one. Let's start with the second one. The poet likes to stare at sheep and cows. So in the poem, we have the same line there, stare at sheep and cows. Let's see. And stare as long as sheep and cows. We have the same line there, which gives you the clue to arrive at the answer. When it comes to the third question, According to the poet, squirrels hide nuts. We have the same line in the poem. We have no time to see where squirrels hide their nuts in grass. So we have the answer there, in grass. Let's see the fourth one. Streams full of stars like skies at midnight means. I told you in the previous slide, I will be describing uh, the simile we find in the poem. Look at the poem. Stream full of stars like skies at night. Look at the previous line there. No time to see in broad daylight. Can you see stars in broad daylight? No. Here it says, streams full of stars like skies at night, which means when the sun rays fall on the surface of water, it glitters like stars which we can see in the night sky. It's an interesting simile, isn't it? So the answer is, when the rays of the sun fall on the streams, the water glitters like, that is the simile there. Now we have come to the last question of the activity. The theme of this poem is, so what do you mean by the theme? Theme is the message that the poet tries to convey. So here the theme is the importance of relaxing and appreciating nature. Now I'm going to show you another interesting poem. It is very simple in language so that you can easily read and understand the poem. Let's see what it is. It is Daddy's Making Dinner by Jeff Mondack. Shall we read the poem? Daddy's Making Dinner, I've seen it all before. French fries black and burning and meat loaf on the floor. Daddy's Making Dinner, the sugar bowl just broke. Fido ate the gravy, the house has filled with smoke. Daddy is making dinner, but I'm not one to mourn. Soon he will surrender and go pick up the phone. Daddy made the dinner, today's my lucky day. Dinners in the trash can and pizzas on the way. What do you mean by mourn here? Mourn means complain or grumble. And surrender? So here the surrender means give up. 
Now you have an activity. In this activity, you are going to obtain the necessary word or phrase from the poem and complete this paragraph. Shall you do the first one with me? The blank is being prepared by daddy today. So what is being prepared by daddy? Now see this first stanza. Daddy is making dinner. What is daddy making? He is making dinner. So the answer should be the dinner is being prepared by daddy today. Now it is time for you to do the rest of the activity. I hope you have completed all the blanks. Let's see your answers. The dinner is being prepared by daddy today. While preparing he broke the sugar bowl. Can you find any clue in the poem there? Let's see. Here we have the word broke. The same word broke appears in the second stanza. The sugar bowl just broke. So you can easily arrive at the answer there. He broke the sugar bowl. What about the third one? So the blank was eaten by Fido. So we have the clue here, eaten and Fido. Shall we see whether we can see them in the poem? Yes, Fido ate the gravy. It is in the second stanza. Yeah, we can easily find the answer here. The gravy was eaten by Fido. But the child is not sad because the daddy put the dinner into the, it is very clear, daddy put the dinner into the trash can. And the last one, so the child is not sad, he is happy. Now see the answers again. Now we have another interesting poem. Let's see what it is. Okay, children, when you have questions on poem, You'd better read the questions before you read the poem. Why I'm saying that? When you read the questions first, you have some clues and those clues will help you when you read the poem. Let's read the questions. The first one, why does the spider view a sticky web? Now I want you to take your notebook and copy down these questions while I'm reading them. Second one, are all the strands sticky in a spider web? Third one, who knows the dry strands in a spider web? Question number four. Write the line which says that the spider's body is slippery. Number five. Find words from the poem which have the same meaning as the following. A. Unlucky. B. String. Now look at the picture here. It is a picture of a spider web. And you can also see some strands there. Now it is clear that when you read these questions, that we are going to read a poem about a spider web and we have strands there. Let's read the poem. Do spiders stick to their own webs by Amy Goldman Coss? The spider views a sticky web to capture bugs to eat. What keeps the spider's sticky web from sticking to her feet? Spider webs are very tricky because not all the strands are sticky. Unlike the passing hapless fly, the spiders know which strands are dry. But if by accident she stands on any of the sticky strands, she still would not get stuck. You see, her oily body slides off free. So what do you mean by sticky here? You know, st if something is sticky, it's like glue in texture. We also have the word tricky there. If something is tricky, it makes you believe something falls. We also have the word strands here. You know the strands are thin threads. Let's look at the questions again. Why does the spider view a sticky web? What do you think is the clue which helps you to arrive at the answer? Yeah, the key words are view a sticky web. Again the question is why does the spider view a sticky web? Let's move on to the poem back. Here we have the same words in the poem, weaves a sticky web. It's in the first stanza, the first line. The spider weaves a sticky web. Why does the spider weave a sticky web? To capture bugs to eat. So the answer is to capture bugs to eat. Now I have done the first question with you. It is time for you to find the answers for the other questions. Take your time. All right, 
I hope you have found the answers. Let's check your answers. Are all the strands tricky in a spider web? Here, what is the keyword that helps you to arrive at the answer? The word is sticky. Let's move on to the poem again. See the second stanza. Not all the strands are sticky. So the answer is not all the strands are sticky. The third one, who knows the dry strands in a spider web? Here the keyword is dry strands. Let's move on to the poem. Look at the last line of the second stanza. The spider knows which strands are dry. Now, who knows which strands are dry? It is the spider. So the answer is spider. The fourth question, write the line which says that the spider's body is slippery. So what is the keyword here? Keyword is slippery. Now you know if something is oily, it is slippery. So the answer is her oily body slides off free. Let's see the last question. Find words from the poem which have the same meaning as the following. The first one, unlucky. So who is unlucky to get caught here? You know, the fly is unlucky. So what is the adjective which is used to describe the fly? It is hapless. And you all know the meaning of the word strings. Strings are strands. Now I have another interesting poem for you to read. Let's see the questions first again. What is strange about Mrs. Spider's neighbours? Where is Mrs. Spider's home? Whom did Mrs. Spider expect as visitors? Mention two types. What did Mr. Fly do when Mrs. F Spider invited him? Write the line which says what Mrs. Spider wanted the fly to do after walking into the living room. Now we know we are going to read a poem again about a spider and we have a fly as a visitor here. Shall we read the poem? Before that, I have something to tell you. You get questions on poem at the GCE all level question paper. I have taken two questions from past papers, one from 2014, the other one from 2017. Look at the first question which appeared in 2014 paper. Let's read the poem. Mrs. Spider's Parlor by Sheila Brain. Will you walk into my living room? Do be friendly, Mr. Fly. It is strange that all my neighbours should be so very shy. Since I settled in this rose bush, not a moth, fly or beetle has been kind enough to call. The sorrowful Mrs. Spider smile her most charming smile. Please come in, now what's to stop? Rest your tired wings a while. Thank you, ma'am, but pray excuse me, Mr. Fly just turned and fled. There are stories that your living room is a dining room, he said. Now let's read the questions. What is strange about Mrs. Spider's neighbours? Can you see any clue in this question? The word strange and Mrs. Spider. Let's look at the poem. The question is, what is strange about Mrs. Spider's neighbours? Third line of the poem. It is strange that all my neighbours should be so very shy. So here we have the word strange. Neighbours are very shy. See the second question. Where is Mrs. Spider's home? So which word gives you the clue to arrive at the answer? Here in the poem we have the word settle. Let's see. Look at the fifth line there. Since I settle in this rose bush. So the home of the spider is rose bush. See the third question. Whom did Mrs. Spider expect as visitors? Mention two types. Now use your common sense. Now in a spider's web, usually insects can be seen as prey. That means insects get caught in spider's web. Now can you see any insects in the poem there? Let's look at the poem. See this line, not a moth, fly or beetle has been kind enough to call. So you can find the answer, moth, fly or beetle. Question number four. What did Mr. Fly do when Mrs. Spider invited him? The answer is thanked and fled. What do you mean by fled here? Fled is the past tense of flee. Flee means running away. See the last question. Write the line which says what Mrs. Spider wanted the fly to do after walking into the living room. 
So the answer is, rest your tired wings a while. Now let's move on to the last question, which was taken from 2017 paper. So the questions are, is a kingdom underground a quiet world or a noisy world? Which words tell you this? Second one, find two other words or phrases in the poem which mean under. Question number three, the poet says they stop their work to hear his walk. Who are referred to as they in line seven? Number four, what two tools disturb the silence of the earth occasionally? Number five, how do some creatures who do not work find their sleep underground? Last one, who seem to be the busiest creatures? Now it is clear that we are going to read a poem about something happening underground. Shall we read the poem? Underground by James Reeves. In the deep kingdom underground, there's no light and little sound. Down below the earth's green floor, the rabbit and the mole explore. The quarrying ants run to and fro to make their populous empires grow. Do they, as I pass overheard, stop in their work to hear my tread? Some creatures sleep and do not toil, secure and warm beneath the soil. Sometimes a fork or spade intrudes upon their earthly solitudes. Downward the branching tree roots spread into the country of the dead. Deep down the buried rocks and stones are like the earth's gigantic bones. In the dark kingdom underground, how many marvelous things are found. What do you mean by quarry here? Quarry means finding something or finding stone underground. Let's see the questions. Shall I do the first one with me? Is the kingdom underground a quiet world or a noisy world? Which words tell you this? Let's see the poem. Here the first line says, in the deep kingdom underground, there's no light and little sound. The little sound means almost no sound. So you can easily find the answer. Is the kingdom underground a quiet world or a noisy world? Which words tell you this? No sound, little sound. Now take your time and do the rest of the activity. Shall we check the answers now? Let's start with the second one. Find two other words or phrases in the poem which mean under. Yes, answer is clear, below or deep down or beneath. The third one, the poet says they stop their work to hear his walk, who are referred to as they in line seven. Let's move on to the poem again. See the seventh line there. Do they as I pass overheard. Now go back to the previous line. Quarrying ants run to and fro to make their populous empires grow. So who run to and fro? Yes, they refer to quarrying ants. Question number four, what two tools disturb the silence of the earth occasionally? They are fork and spade. The last question, how do some creatures who do not work find their sleep underground, secure and warm? Last question, who seem to be the busiest creatures? It is clear, ants seem to be the busiest creatures. With that, we have come to the end of our lesson. Before we wind up, I have something to tell you. When you have some questions of poems, don't approach a poem saying yourself that, what if I don't understand the poem? Approach the poem telling yourself that I'm going to be able to understand at least a few words. A little bit of common sense and the knowledge of few words will help you to find the answers. That's it for today. Hope you have enjoyed the lesson. Goodbye until we meet up again.